for our scripture reading. We'll be reading 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I have received the, from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his words. Amen. Father divine, we ask that you speak unto us now. Let only the name of Jesus be exalted. And may our hearts be touched by your sacrifice. For us today we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today I want to speak to us in the few minutes that we have on communion as a symbol. Communion as a symbol. You know, today I want us to look at this wonderful sacrament as an act that is rich in symbolism. And I'm going to ask for your participation today as we go through this passage. If I can ask communications to yeah, keep on the screen for us, First Corinthians, 11, 23 to 26 that we just read. And then we can all participate today. So starting from verse 23, as we go through each section of this message, I would like us to all read aloud the portion of, in this chapter pertaining to this part of the message. So in this first phrase, we're just going to read the first phrase. Let's all read together from verse 23. Okay, so when you look at this first phrase, Paul's words here are an indication that it was a regular part of the early Christians' church. It was their practice to come together in communion. And when you also look and reflect on this first, frame, uh, first phrase, for I have received of the Lord that which I have also delivered unto you, it shows us that it was from Jesus himself, that the church inherited this sacrament. You know, just as you read through the rest of the passage also, you find that Paul was trying to admonish the church in terms of what they have received from the Lord. So he says, for well, I have received, you know, from the Lord. So today I want us to look at three ways in which communion serves as a symbol. My hope is that, is that as we go through this, and as we partake of the communion in a bit, that all of us will gain a deeper sense of what goes on during communion. That it is not just a part of church. It's not just for us to just pass time in church. We are not doing this just flippantly. But rather, I want us to appreciate today that communion serves a purpose. It points us to Jesus Christ in a very real way. So first point is that communion is a symbol of sacrifice. Communion is a symbol of sacrifice. Now let's read verse 23 and 24 together again. Let's go. Verse 24. Amen. You know, church, this is probably pretty obvious. But the word sacrifice implies that it costs someone something. So in this case, it cost Jesus his life. And here is the interesting thing. The father is the one who actually initiated this sacrifice. 
So when you read further in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, the Bible says, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. The Bible tells us that on our own, we are incapable of loving God. It says that there is no one who seeks God, but instead we have all turned away from God so we could all go, go our own ways to try to be the master of our own destiny. But the scripture says that God loves us so much that he made a way for us to come unto him. He sent Jesus, his son. And Jesus became the sacrifice to pay the penalty for your sin and for my sins. Just like the elder said earlier on, this is a sacrifice. For God first gave. And the reason today that we can give is because we are first received. None of us can give without receiving. But today we can give others that which has been given you know, to us. God gave, you know, and communion serves as a symbol of the sacrifice that Jesus, you know, gave unto us. For he gave his life for our sins. Secondly, communion is a symbol of salvation. Let's read verse 25 together. Let's go, church. Amen. You know, there is plenty of stuff out there that suggests that Jesus died for no other reason than just the fact that maybe he stepped on the toes of some powerful men. You know, some suggest that maybe he was just a victim of circumstances. But the Bible tells us otherwise. The Bible tells us that Jesus died on purpose. So communion is a symbol of our salvation that was procured to, you know, uh, for us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So in verse 25, we have just read the scripture saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. His blood brought us salvation. You know, his blood is the reason why you and I, we have a hope of eternal life. Peter, writing in his own gospel, says, For Christ died for the sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. Friends, there is no other way to God than through the death of Jesus. No other way. If Jesus hadn't died, then we will have absolute no hope for heaven. We will die for our own sins, and rightfully so too. But God didn't want that, and neither did Jesus. So Jesus came to our world, and he gave his life to save us. To save us from the penalty of our sins, and also to save us from the power of sin in our lives. I want us to know that it is important that he didn't just die for the penalty of the sins of the fathers, but he died to also save us from the power of sin. So because of his death, both the penalty of sin is broken and also the power of sin is broken in our lives. The Bible says that we have earned death for our sin, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Today, I want to ask you, have you reached out to take that eternal life for yourself? I need you to know that we are not given heaven automatically. What do I mean? We must want heaven, and we have to receive it for ourselves. It is, not, it is a gift that has been thrown open to us, but it is not automatic that we receive it. So each one of us today, through the symbolic act of communion, we can once again receive salvation through the precious blood of Jesus as we partake of his blood. My prayer today is that everyone here will walk out of this place with the assurance that their sins are forgiven 
and that they have a home in heaven because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now this leads me to the last way in which communion is also a symbol. For communion is also a symbol of anticipation. Now let's read verse 26 together. Amen. Paul says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So communion is not just an act steeped in the present. In, uh, the communion is an act that looks in anticipation to the coming of Jesus Christ. Friends, Jesus came not to be born. He came also to die. But here is the good news. Not only did he die and therefore purchased our salvation, the Bible says he rose again. And even that's not the hand, he's also coming back again. And this time is coming back again to take us home to be with him, to take us to this world, to his own world, to spend eternity in the presence of his father. In the midst of the daily grind of life, you and I can look in anticipation to the day when this world and all that we have experienced whilst here will become a distant memory. Communion is a way of saying, I'm looking forward to see Jesus coming back in glory. Oh, please come soon, Lord Jesus. And in the meantime, I'm going to recognize what you did for me at Calvary. That is what we say every time we partake of communion. So as you take communion today, take it with a sense of anticipation. However, in all my talk today about communion being a symbol, I want to make something perfectly clear. Communion is much more than just a symbol. This sacrament points to something very real. Jesus really did die on the cross. He really did give his body to be broken. And his blood really was poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. Please don't ever approach what we do in communion as just a symbol. It is an act of consecration and a dedication. And that's one of the reasons I like the fact that we have the communion service three to four times at least in a year. Because I sure do need to rededicate my life to Christ as frequently as I possibly can. As a matter of fact, if we can have communion every Sabbath, I would like it because I can rededicate my life 56 times in a year. Friends, you and I, the truth is that we need to rededicate our lives to Christ over and over again. For none of us can say we have gone between last communion and now and we have not offended God in any way. If the truth be told, we all need to do a better job, both as a church and as individuals. We need to do a better job of consecrating ourselves to God. To say to God, I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I've got, Help me, Lord, to be completely yours. And one of the ways to do that is to recognize the length that God went to bring himself to us. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? And did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for someone such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Oh, was it for crimes that I have done, that is suffered on the tree, amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love that I hold. Here, Lord, I give myself away. It is all that I can do. 
at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sign and now I am happy all the day. You know, with the lyrics of these hymns ringing in our hearts, let us pray today and prepare our hearts as we partake of communion. And my prayer is that, like the songwriter said, that today at the cross, may the burdens of our heart be all rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.